Hi, this is Imre Galambos, professor of Chinese at the University of Cambridge. And this video is about using the Kindle versus using paper books. It is a comparison between these two modes of reading. The Kindle is definitely a game changer when it comes to reading habits in our modern society. It is a technology that has taken the concept of reading to entirely new dimensions. People who use it swear by it and often claim that it changed their life and they will never go back to reading paper books. But does this device really mean the end of physical books? Is the Kindle going to dominate the way humanity consumes books? Will this lead to a dramatic decrease in the volume of paper books published each year? And will Amazon take over the world of books? If this is something you're interested in, then continue watching. But before that, please hit the subscribe and like buttons to help the channel grow and to be notified when new videos come online. The Kindle has certainly made an impact on how people read today. It is becoming extremely popular. Notice, however, that this largely happened as Amazon grew to its unprecedented size. The Kindle grew with it rather than the other way around. It wasn't that Kindle was such a marvelous technology that it had the power to pull Amazon up. In fact, it had been around for quite a while, but its popularity only rose when Amazon rose to its current success. And only after that was it able to go further than anybody had ever predicted. I personally have resisted buying a Kindle for many years, simply because my experience with other ebook readers wasn't overwhelmingly positive. Or rather, it was positive, but it wasn't mind-blowingly so. But then about a year ago, I bought a new ebook reader, and shortly after that, I also bought a Kindle. And it was indeed a game changer. All of a sudden, I began reading a lot more. I was reading all kinds of things, things I never had the time to read before, books I always wanted to read, but somehow never got around to reading them. And during the pandemic, being cut off from libraries, including the university library, I got hooked on reading this way very soon. I wasn't just buying Kindle books, I was downloading other ebook formats from all sorts of sites, converting them to Kindle's format, including a multitude of PDFs I had on my computer. It was amazing, I was thrilled how much more I was reading and I thoroughly enjoyed the experience. But then after a while I realized that many of the books I read on my Kindle were kind of hazy in my memory. If I tried to recollect what they were about, it wasn't that easy. They did not seem to have made a lasting effect on me, even if at the time I really enjoyed reading them, or even if they were truly exceptional books. I thought that one of the reasons for this must have been that I read too many books, and I didn't give enough time for my brain to process all this information properly, to store it away the way it usually stores away books I normally read. Instead, I just finished one book and immediately hopped on to the next one. And after reading 20 or 30 of them, I realized I wasn't able to differentiate between them very well. They kind of blended together in my memory. But then I thought more about this, and I think the bigger problem must have been the uniformity of Kindle. That every book I read with it looked the same. I may have changed the font size and the brightness, but this was based mostly on where and when I was reading, rather than depending on the book itself. It wasn't a separate setting for each book. I think this is because books are so much more than just text. They have a physical dimension that caters to our different senses. We touch them and our fingers feel the smoothness of paper, the thickness of the pages, the slippery surface of the dust jacket, or the overall size of the volume. We smell the ink and the paper, we hear the sound of turning the pages, and even if these smells and sounds are not so strong, we register them and store them away as part of the experience of reading the book. We also perceive a host of visual qualities, such as the type of font, the whiteness of paper, the length of lines, the size of letters, the size of margins, the location of page numbers, and so on. All these attributes become part of the reading experience, making it so much richer than just processing raw text. Of course, I don't mean to say that all books are beautiful and great to touch. You may find some old volumes on the attic of your grandparents, which smell bad and even stain your hands. But all this is just as much part of the reading experience as when holding a beautifully designed book. It becomes part of the memory of reading. The memory of books we love often invokes a strong emotional charge in us, and their tactile and visual properties are encoded in our brain as part of the reading experience. 
This is why I can recall some of the books I read in my childhood, decades ago. And for some of them, I can also remember what they looked like, where the binding faded off, where there was a particular illustration, or where we accidentally tore a page when we were playing with it. The point is that physical books have physical properties. They do contain text, but they're also objects we connect to through a variety of our senses. And while Amazon has certainly gone out of its way to design a product that was good to look at and very satisfying to touch, my Kindle ultimately remains the same as I move from one book to the other. So overall, when I read dozens of books in a format that is similar, I somehow lose my ability to keep them apart in my head. They tend to blend together and it becomes much harder to differentiate between them. And I don't even want to think about how much I will remember of them 10 or 15 years from now. There are of course a number of techniques to engage with Kindle books on a deeper level, and these are great to overcome some of these issues. In any case, all this is not an argument against Kindle, but I also think that it will definitely never replace the experience of reading real books. A real book I can touch with my hands, and I need to return it to the library on time so I don't get fined. Or I need to find a space for it on my own bookshelf, and then I will continue seeing it for months or maybe years, and it will gradually become much more a part of me than otherwise. So in sum, I think the Kindle is a wonderful device that I love using, and I use it every single day. But if you ask me whether it has the capacity to replace real books, I would have to say no. It will never replace real books. Since I bought my Kindle, I don't think I've been reading fewer paper books. I just also read Kindle books in addition to those. In any case, I would love to hear your take on this, so please write in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and see you next time.